We are so happy to celebrate your anniversary with you guys. What attracted us to this church was how down to earth the pastor is. And uh, I know his heart is definitely after God and it's so contagious. So once again, happy anniversary. Thanks for having us. Hey, Pastors Dale and Angela Donadio. Congratulations. Wow. 30 years of faithfulness to the house of the Lord, 30 years of faithfulness in this community and your impact has rippled well beyond the state of Virginia. And Tammy and I, and on behalf of LifePoint Church, we wanna say just thank you. Um, not many people may know this, but you're the very first pastor that ever reached out to me when I was a young 29 year old church planner, just moved to this community and didn't know anybody. And that coffee made a real difference in my life. You're the one that opened up your facility and let us have meetings and let us come together. Your church is the place where our church made their first financial commitment towards our very own facility. And so you've played a pivotal role along the years in your faithfulness, your heart of generosity, your spirit of it being about the kingdom has permeated and affected us in incredible ways. And I just wanna say, thank God for you. Congratulations on 30 years. And I believe your best really is yet to come. You see, is this thing on? Oh my goodness it is. Pastors Dale and Angela and the Denadio family. 30 years in ministry is no small feat. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for all that you do, all that you're doing, all the blessings that have come your way and that will continue to come your way from my family to yours. Thank you for welcoming us into the River of Life family. But thank you so much for just being who you are, being the loving people that you are, for caring the way that you do and for preaching the roof off the house. Like, really, like we really need to look into getting this thing checked out because the roof is ripped off constantly over and over again. But look, you guys are amazing. And I just wish God's blessings. I pray God's blessings on your family forever, 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 forever. From the Hyman family to the Donatio family. We love you. We really, really love you. Like, love, love. You know, I mean, it's not even weird. We love you. Yes, we're so excited to celebrate your 30th anniversary with your church there. Such fond memories of traveling together from Missouri out to Virginia with our two-month-old baby girl, Brianna, at the time. And uh, it's just hard to believe you guys have been there this long, and you must have just a wonderful church family that you love and that loves on you. And we couldn't be happier to celebrate this time with you and to Gabrielle and Christian and uh, just all the wonderful memories that you guys have made there from the uh, Passion Plays with the Cherry Pickers with Dale up as uh, Jesus uh, resurrecting, I believe is when that was happening in the Passion Play and uh, just the times that we spent there on the East Coast with y'all and uh, getting to know some of your church family. Um, so just congratulations, happy anniversary to you guys. Love you guys. Love you. Hey, Uncle Dana, Angela. Happy 30 years of ministry. We're so proud of you guys. I mean, 30 years to run a church is exceptional. 30 years doing anything is amazing, honestly. But you guys have led the pack. You remain faithful, and uh, you guys have done amazing things. I know this is just the beginning. We love you. Can't wait to see you guys and uh, celebrate, because this is a monumentous occasion. Hey, Uncle Dale and Angela, I just wanted to say congratulations on 30 years of ministry. That is such an awesome ach achievement, not to mention the eternal achievement that that is. Um, that is just so awesome. I'm so proud of you guys, and um, we just love you so much, and um, we just uh, continue to pray for you guys and your ministry, and just continue to trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on on your own understanding, and He'll continue to guide you guys in your path and, and the rest of your ministry. So we are just so proud of you, and once again, congratulations. We love you so much. Wow, Dale and Ange, 30 years. That's a long time to be in ministry. You guys have done an amazing job. It's hard for me to even imagine it's been 30 years because I just see my big brother practicing his wrestling moves on me, and that was not good. <laughs> but um, you guys have a heart for the people, a heart for your church. They're so lucky to have you, so blessed to have you, and I hope you guys feel celebrated today. So proud of you. Love you so much. Guys, thank you for all that you do for the ministry, bro. Angela, 
Um, I know it's not easy, um, especially dealing with your crazy congregation. And I'm sure they're watching this right now. Your congregation, hey, you guys, you're not easy. For To be able to stick with it for 30 years, that is truly accomplishment. But I know you both know who you're doing it for. You're doing it for the king. It is our pleasure to say congratulations to you on 30 years of ministry there in Spotsylvania, specifically at River of Life. I still have fond memories of the first time we saw you. I believe we flew you in from Hawaii, but I remember them when I saw you for the first time. And I just knew you were quality people. I just knew and could sense there was such an anointing on both of your lives. I was excited to have you be part of our staff. I remember that really fondly too. You walked into our kitchen, which by the way, had probably five different kinds of wallpaper going in time, which in fact, I think is in style again. We'll have to check with Jen at Swink about that. But you walked in and you had this really cute nautical looking blue and white outfit. How do you remember what she looked I know these things. Your hair was in perfect position. And you smiled, you had such physical beauty. But my goodness, there was just um, a passion that I sensed immediately in you. And both of you, both, both of you, you looked like the package on the outside, but you really, the real gift was on the inside. Fond memories of all the years we spent in ministry together, the legacy that you left, especially to our family, to Ryan and Jordan. They still talk about youth ministry. They still talk about going to fine arts with you guys. And I, I remember, Angela, uh, what you did for us and for the community many years ago. Uh, you put on a production, The Victor. I think we did it for several years, but it was such an impact on our community. And it just showed the, uh, the talent that both of you had. Absolutely. And then we saw the beginning of your family. And then it was time for the Basmanis to take a herding church in Maryland, where we were for 19 and a half years. Now we're here in Florida. We're giving you a backdrop so you can see the sunny palm trees. Actually, what you're seeing is our pool cage damage from the hurricane. But we came down here only after Alan passed the baton to you, Dale. Alan, I, I could not help but think about taking the baton of the years that I put in there at, uh, we called us possibly the Assembly of God then, and handing the baton to you. And Dale and Angela, you took that baton and you ran your own race and you ran it so well and are continuing to run it so well. Excited to see what God has in store for you in the future. It's always God's will, God's way, and God's time. Thanks so much for continuing with us as we go through life together. There's nothing like doing life together. And we're just proud of you. We're so happy for the people I hope your congregation realizes what a treat it is to have a couple that has been so steady and so constant and so intentional about ministry. So congratulations, you guys. Congratulations. God bless you both. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy 30-year anniversary in the ministry. But I want to say this. I'm excited and can't wait to see what the next 30 years is going to bring you guys such great leadership. And I know if my wife Pat would say she would have been involved in this ministry because she would love the both of you. I thank God for you. Keep looking up. And God is going to use your tremendously. You haven't seen nothing yet. You had just begun. Take care and have a wonderful anniversary. Uh, we've only been here six years, but we've enjoyed it all. And, and we love the church. We love what you're doing. Um, I'm very grateful that you preach from the word and, and uh, encourage us in our prayer life. And we will continue to pray for you for another 30 years of ministry or even more if that's what God has in store for you. So thank you both. We, we love you both. Uh, congratulations. Happy 30th anniversary, Pastor Dale and Angela. We just want to say thank you for serving the Lord and, and here in uh, Bustle, Tucky, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for what you guys have done in here. We love you guys and, and just thank you. Love you. Love you guys. Thank you for uh, sacrificing. Thank you um, for being led by the Spirit. Thank you for operating humility. Thank you 
for your leadership and your value that you bring to our lives. And um, we just, we glean a lot, we learn a lot, and we just want to say uh, we appreciate you for everything that you're doing. We're so thankful for you. Thank you for the example you set in dis- discipleship, time management, um, th- in learning and growing in Christ. Um, thank you for the sacrifice that you guys have made for ministry and to develop others. Um, thank you for welcoming our baby girl into the church and just making our family feel welcomed and loved and loved and giving us a place to serve. Um, we are so grateful for you and we are blessed to be a part of the celebration for you. So congratulations on 30 years in ministry. You guys are touching lives everywhere in humility and in love. So thank you for that example. 30 years of fire, baby. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Pastor Dial and Pastor Angela, well done. 30 years of successful pastor at the river of life and beyond. You have been faithful in little and God gave you more. Pastor Dale, together with Pastor Angela and family, you have made many sacrifices. You have been through many trials and challenges, but you have kept on going because you have been called of God and you truly believe it. You have always taken your God-given ministries serious and have continued to serve your ma- our Master and accomplish His purposes. Pastor Dale and Pastor Angela, may God continue to bless and guide and prosper and protect and give you many, many, many more years of ministry wherever the Lord leads you. I leave you with these encouraging scriptures. Philippians 1.6, and I'm certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Jeremiah 29.11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. The Lord will tell both of you today, this is my command, be strong, and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Happy 30th anniversary. Happy 30th anniversary. Uncle Dale and Angela, happy 30 years at River of Life. That's awesome. I can't wait to see you guys at the wedding. I'm so excited. Love you guys. There's a little rat dog and a big rat. Dale and Angela have always had just a pure heart, I've always been after God's heart. And we have a healthy church, we have a loving church, we have pastors that really do um, preach it and then live it, live it out yeah. constantly. Um, and it, we're blessed, we've been so blessed by their ministry, by their teaching. A million percent. In a time where like, so many pastors begin to make themselves unapproachable, or they make the ministry about them. Yeah. It is not Dale Donatio Ministries. It's it not. never has been. No, never has been. Like, and, and it's the approachability. Um, I get a little jelly, like when I see people new to the church, like it taking up Dale's time, like whatever. I'm like, hi, you don't know my man. Back up off him. But it's so giving with his time, his talents, his love, his influence. Um, he literally wanted to see my dad in the hospital. My yeah. father is not a member of the church. Yeah. Went to his house to visit with him. Visited your, your mom after he passed. Like, like, Called my mom. I'm like, how do you find the time to do this? Like, literally, I don't know how he would would find the time to fit that into I don't his even routine. call my mom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me look bad. Burnt. But no, like, like I, the the passion and the love for people is, is tremendous. And... Um, seriously, I, I legitimately can t- tell you that you know, my walk with God, as many struggles as it has, would would not be as strong as it is without I can say the same. without Dale um, and without Angie's influence. Um, it's it's massive, and, and the the level of appreciation just doesn't like it can't state it in this silly little video. Not three minutes an hour. No, no, this is like. Like, cause we're boys. 
Android girl. It's my boy. I won't do that. <laughs> now, you all know Pastor Dale and Angela have been leading and loving us for 30 years. That's right, three decades. We talked about this. I was two when they started. 30 years of sermons, prayers, baptisms, weddings, potlucks, you name it, they've been there. And we thought, what can we possibly do to show our appreciation? Of course, we considered the basics like cupcakes with their faces on them, because who wouldn't want to take a bite out of that, you know what I'm saying? A massive charcuterie board, because we know that that is their favorite way to feed us. Let's not forget about the men's event. Or how about Pastor Dale, a Pastor Dale action figure? Can you just imagine pulling the string and it's saying something like, it's not about perfection, it's about direction. Or maybe like, the spiritual realities of life are greater than the physical realities or my personal favorite, prayer is relationship, and relationship is prayer. Let's not forget about the limited edition Angela Dog, complete with a mini keyboard and an array of encouraging phrases from her many books. But in all seriousness, we realized there's something even better than cupcakes, cheese, not really, or action figures, and that's investing in them the way that they've invested in us. For 30 years, Pastor Dale and Angela have poured their hearts, souls, and countless hours of prayer into this church and each one of us. They've been there to celebrate our joys, comfort us in our sorrows, and guide us with wisdom and love. They've laughed with us, cried with us, and maybe consumed enough coffee to keep the entire Starbucks in business. Not a lie. So today, we're inviting you to join us in saying thank you in a tangible way. You can give a love offering by visiting rolva.org slash give, where there's a special designation for the 30th anniversary. You can also text ROLWC and your amount to 73256, mail a check if you're old fashioned, or you can use the envelope in the seat back in front of you and just drop it off in the foyer in the boxes on your way out. If you've ever been blessed by pastors Dale and Angela, and let's be honest, who hasn't? This is your chance to bless them back for 30 years of unwavering faith and leadership. Love you, church. Amen. This is really a special day and an awesome time. And I know that Pastor Dale and Angela appreciate all that's been done, but they'll be the first to say, it's not about me. And you put your hands towards them as we pray over them. Heavenly Father, first of all, we thank you for calling them, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the heritage that you've given them, Lord. Before they were ever born, Lord, you knew them. You knew, Lord God, what you had in store for them. And you prepared them, Lord God, and anointed them to carry out the work that you've called them to do. We thank you for them. We thank you for Christian, and we thank you for Gabrielle, Lord God, and for your hand being upon their children, Lord. I thank you uh, for how you've kept uh, Christian and Gabrielle, Lord. Father God, we ask continued blessings to be upon them. We ask, oh Lord God, that your anointing will rest heavily upon them, Lord, and continue to use them for your glory, Lord. For their lives, Lord God, they would say is not for themselves, but for your glory, Lord. Be glorified in them is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we ask this. Amen. Amen. We love you. I'm gonna ask Reverend Dr. <laughs> Pastor Jacob to come on out. He has an incredible message for us this morning. I am so grateful to the Lord for giving me the opportunity to uh, give this uh, message uh, in celebration of my dear friend and sister. Uh, my message is titled Number One, Number Two. <laughs> 30 years of fruitful and faithful ministry of Reverend Angela and Reverend Dale Donadio. Now, of these 30 years, 
I've been in ministry with them for 20 years. I joined them in ministry right about the time when he was elected uh, or voted as the head pastor uh, for this church. And a few people had left because they felt that um, he was too young to be their pastor. But I found him <laughs> to be new, too, too handsome and knowledgeable to be my pastor. So I, ch I chose to join the church. And uh, I've been in ministry with them for the past 20 years. So at least that gives me uh, some rights to be able to give this message today. My text is taken from Genesis 40, verses 15. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it, but I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And then Genesis uh, 37, 5 to 7. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bow down to it. Let's pray. Most high God, add your blessings to your word, for it is the entrance of your word that giveth life. Hide me under the cross and speak to your people. In your precious name I pray, amen. Now, a dream, what is a dream? A dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. Now, humans spend about two hours dreaming per night, and each dream lasts around five to 20 minutes, although the dreamer may perceive the dream as being uh, much longer than this. Now, in Joel 2.28, we read that, and it said, it shall come to pass after that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Often when I read this passage, I ask, why will old men dream dreams and young men uh, see visions? And you know, the difference between a dream and a vision is that <laughs> one happens during sleep and one happens when you are awake. You don't see a vision when you are sleeping. You only dream when you are sleeping. Now, why will the Bible talk of old men dreaming? Because old men are prone to sleeping and resting. So they, give, they are given dreams. Young men are energetic and ready to move into action. So they are giving visions while they are awake. So it is said that if you don't turn your dream into a vision, it will never see daylight. <laughs> Why? Because your dream will continue to be a dream. It must become a vision because Bible says work while it is day. So you can only bring that dream to fruition when you work during the day. And so, you need to convert your dream to a vision and like a young man, put it into action. Then it will come to pass. Now, a leader is portrayed as this. According to John C. Maxwell, leaders vary by occupation, personality, and style. There is no specific formula specifying exactly how to lead well. Still, greater leaders throughout history share the common set of characteristics. That is number one, character, perspective, dream or vision, courage, favor, charisma, or influence. These characteristics are founded over the 20 years portrayed in my dear friend and sister, the Donarios. Now, I say this because I have grown to know them and their style of leadership and have ministered with them and seen that most of these characteristics 
are portrayed and exemplified by them. Now, I will not have time to go into each one of them, but as I give you this sermon, you will see how it plays out, these characteristics play out in my dear brother and sister. Now, you may wonder what type of title I've given to this message. The leadership concept of number one, number two is, was first developed by Kerry John Morgan to define the leadership ability to embrace the leadership concept of delegation. Now, it is said that only good and excellent leaders are capable of delegating appropriately or good. And we find this even in scripture. Every leader must have this understanding. Those of you who are not familiar with the scripture, Moses' father-in-law, Gertrude, visited them when they were in the bush and he had all these people that he was leading. And the Bible says Moses would sit from sunrise to sundown judging these people. And Gertrude has, has, had visited them and this is where first in the scriptures the concept of delegation surfaced. He said, you can do that, Moses. Choose honest and honorable men among them and teach them the laws. Let them sit in council over these people. And most difficult matters they bring to you and you will judge it. So you realize that the concept of even the Supreme Court and the, the type of American judi judicial system is built up from this concept that was first given to Moses uh, by Jethro, his father-in-law. Now, it is important to understand this. If you are a leader and you cannot trust people and delegate authority to them, then you cannot be an effective leader. This is an area that I find to be very, very prominent in the leadership style of Pastor Dale and Angela. I am what I am today as a result of their leadership. Many things they delegated to me, and in delegating those things to me, little did they know that they were fulfilling my dream. And that's what a good leader does. He sees a potential, and then he delegates and uses that potential and that potential may never know that in just being obedient and faithful, in the long run, you are fulfilling your own dream. Now, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had, I've had a dream and no one can interpret it. But I've had it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Now, there are two dreams here we are going to be talking about. Pharaoh had a dream, and we are all familiar of that. Pharaoh had a dream, and he did not know what that dream, dream meant. Joseph, too, had a dream. We, we've read of that. In Joseph's dream, he told his brothers about it, and they were angry and hated him and sold him into slavery. Now, two dreams. We don't hear much about Pharaoh's dream anymore. Even after a thousand years, we can still talk of Joseph's dream. But at that time, when Joseph was before Pharaoh, he never mentioned of his dream to Pharaoh. In the same way, you have to understand that when you come to work for the number ones, you work for God through the number one, you don't tell the number one what your dream is. You ask your number one, what is his dream? And in fulfilling your number one's dream, your dream eventually will be fulfilled. Imagine Joseph had appeared before Pharaoh and Pharaoh had told Joseph, told, hey, Joseph, I had a dream. And I've heard of you 
that you can interpret dream. Yeah, yeah, well, Pharaoh, just wait till you hear my dream. I also had a dream before when I was 17. Joseph never did that. But some of us would have been tempted to do that. Pharaoh, you had a dream. Oh, well, let me tell you about my dream. And that is exactly what some of us do. When we are asked to come and work with somebody, that person's dream is what we should pursue. That person's dream become our dream. And the number one potential, huge potential, is his ability to spot potential and harness it to its maximum use. And that's exactly what happened between me and the Donadios. When I first walked into River of Life, probably Pastor Dale had heard that, oh, there is this African boy who has just joined your church. Just as Pharaoh heard that Joseph could interpret dreams. Now, if you are a number one, you must have the confidence that if you bring in that potential into your fold, you will be able to mold that potential to work in such a way that in the end, he will accomplish your dream. You will not be scared that, hey, this potential may in the end take my position. That is insecurity. Pastor Dale and Angela took me and my family into the church, even though they had, I was a credential minister of a service of God from another church. They saw in us a potential. I didn't have to tell Pastor Dale about my dreams. I had dreams as well. I had dreams of how in the future, I will be a blessing to the people of Ghana. You see, your attitude and response to others will determine what doors open for you in your future. I remember the very first time I got closer to the Donadios was when I came to church one night and Pastor Angela for the first time was taking a trip to Africa. I was sitting down when he talked about, she talked about how that uh, she was going to Africa to a children's camp for a minister called Johnson Asari. And this is a man that I knew, when, and we actually grew up together. So I, I, I was sitting there and I said, wow, he's going to see to this man's uh, summer camp. I, I just pray that they will take care of her well. Maybe I should sign up and go with her so I'll be able to help take good care of her. And clearly I heard the Holy Spirit say, so into her trip, don't go with her. I will take care of her. And right there, I took my checkbook and I wrote a check of $300 then. And I went out and I stood there and I said, I'm from Ghana. I'm from the very town, Pastor Angela, you are going to the children's camp. But the Lord has told me not to go with you. I should rather sow into your ministry. And I gave that check of 300. And that was the first trip Pastor Angela took to Tamale, the very place that I was born and I grew up. And in that mission trip, she visited Daboya. And when she went to Daboya and she came back, as she crossed the river, she said, the Lord, planted it in her heart that a church must be planted in that town. Now, this very church, when I was, this very town, the boy, when I was in Tamale, we, our church, went and planted a church there, and it failed miserably. Because why? The pastor did not have the means, and so it wasn't well supported, and it failed. So it was a dream of mine. And so when Pastor Angela came back and expressed this desire that a church be built in the boya to the husband, the husband bought into that vision, and I was called to do the feasibility studies and write a report on how to plant a successful church in the boya. Okay? Now, listen. We will hear more about that. 
But what we see today in Daboya is a result, is as a result of me working to fulfill the dream of Pastor Angela and Dale. Little did they know that it was my desire that a vibrant church be planted in the boya. I never told them about my dream. In the same way, Joseph never told Pharaoh about his dream. But in the end, his dream was fulfilled. Let's look at Revelation 3, 8. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. No one can shut it, for you have little strength, but keep my word, but kept my word and have not denied my name. You see, God knows our works. Each and every one of us, God knows our works. We all need open doors in our lives. And for me and my wife, River of Life and Pastor Dale and Angela were the open doors to our dreams. We all need that. You see, Jesus himself needed John. John came and made the path straight for Jesus to come in. Joseph's generosity also opened the door for him along the way. Joseph never told Pharaoh about his dream, but he took time to interpret the dream to Pharaoh. And Joseph said, O oh, Cain, if you can only find an honest, hardworking young man, God-fearing man, to gather the crops and put it in store for the seven good years of harvest. Now, <laughs> Joseph, mind you, Joseph never said, Cain, by the way, if you can select me, I will be this man who will store up these gifts, uh, this uh, 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 wheat during the, ha the, the time of harvest. Joseph didn't volunteer himself. Pharaoh said, who else can we find to be this man who has the very spirit of God in him? You see, number one, number two is never promote themselves. They allow the number one to see the potential in them and identify them and pick them up. Now, that is not to say you don't express your skills and your desires because obviously in your job description or your CV, you have that inside there. But when you find somebody who is a number two, but decides to promote himself in order to get the attention of the number one, that relationship will not always last. Because in the end, the person will be fulfilling his dream instead of the dream of the number one. Okay? So, number ones find a potential of, wow. Second, number two, the two destinies. Joseph had a destiny and what happened? Pharaoh had a destiny, and Joseph was able to fulfill his destiny just by helping fulfill Pharaoh's destiny. In the end, the hunger was averted as a result of Joseph's interpretation of the dream and his suggestions of how to solve that problem. Now, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at a time it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. That vision tarries, but it will come to pass. And the third point is that the two fulfillments. You see, don't bring your leader problems. Bring them options. Joseph never took the problems to Pharaoh. He made sure that he found solutions to the problems. Okay? Then guide the leader from most issues. Discern timing for particular problems. Now, when you are working, now, you would realize that you are fulfilling the dream of the number one. And in the same way, you might find that, hey, there are certain problems that are coming up 
in your work. Don't always be quick to send the problems to your number one. Find solutions and options and send them to the number one. Then he will know that you are indeed working to fulfill his dream. The number one, number two says, solves problems before they are problems. They don't highlight them. Genesis 41, 26 to 27, seven good years and seven bad years. A 14 year commitment for good times and bad times. Store up in the good and you will be sustained in the bad. It's not the problem that you identify, it is the problems that you solve that matters. So when you are number twos, you solve the problems, you are not quick in identifying and sending it to your number one, but you solve the problem and inform your number one about it. Each and every one of us who have come here to serve as number twos to the Donadios, we have bought into their dream. So we are in the end fulfilling their dream while at the end of the day, our dream is being fulfilled. Now, number one, number two says add and multiply. They don't subtract and divide. Genesis 41, 49. Joseph gathered very much during the time of plenty. Some number ones and number two says we always would want to sub subtract from what is going on. You see, one of the things that you can do when powers and functions are delegated to you is to sit aside and criticize some of the things that your number one does. But the fact is, when you do that, you are subtracting, you are not adding. Yes, he may have issues and done things that you don't like, but you never criticize them in the midst of the congregation. Now, there have been times where, now, Pharaoh prospered as a result of Joseph's work. We are not here to drain, we are here to add. Pastor Dale has brought you on board to add and not to drain. So as number two says, you add, you don't subtract. And it's better to be in someone's clothes. Number one, number two says, look better in someone else's clothes. Look at Genesis 41, 42. Clothed in Pharaoh's garments. I've wondered about this. Look at the 43. And he made him ride in the second chariot. See, when you are number one of number two, sis, you are, look better when you are clothed in your number one's garment. So for me, to be honest with you, wherever I go, even in our district, Potomac district, when they ask me, which church do you worship? See, I don't introduce myself as being a pastor at the River of Life, because people will not recognize me. Usually I add, I serve under Pastor Angela and Pastor Dale. And they will say, oh, wow, okay, yeah, we know them. And so I have chosen always to wear Pastor Dale's garment. I may be wearing this suit today, but in the spiritual realms, I've always, even when I'm in Ghana, I see myself in the spiritual realms as wearing Pastor Dale's garment because he has given me, he has delegated his authority to me to be who I am today. Now, there is no work that I have, work, I have gone for an interview and Pastor Dale doesn't know about it. Why? Because he serves as a referee. And before they would hire me, they would have called him and asked him about me. That is the level of my relationship with him. And it is because I want him to be aware of every move of mine, even though I'm not on the payroll of the church. I am a volunteer and I'm operating under his mantle. I wear his garment. Remember, there's power in the mantle of the person who is your number one. The problem is that some of us, we fail to operate under the garment of our number ones. And when we do that, we undermine his authority. Pastor Dale 
has a spiritual garment for each and every one whom he is called to be partnering with him to fulfill the vision that the Lord has given him. It's no longer our vision, it's his vision. And so we are called to fulfill that with him. Now, we look better when we wear his garment. And finally, ultimately, Joseph's dream was fulfilled. So Joseph established it as, a, as concerning the land in Egypt, still in force today, that a fifth of that produce belongs to Pharaoh. It was only the land of the priests that he did not become, that did not become Pharaoh's, Genesis 47, 26. They replied, your servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they bowed down, prostrating themselves before him. There you go. Joseph didn't become a pharaoh of Egypt before this dream was fulfilled. Some of us will never be pharaohs of Egypt, but yet our dreams will be fulfilled. And in conclusion, I want you to understand this. If you have been called as a number one, number two of the denarios, faithfully fulfill their dreams in whatever you do. And believe me, your dream will come to pass. I saw the full fruition and the fulfillment of my dream just this last time that I was in Ghana. I was asked to confer the degrees of the graduating class. Why? Because Dr. Roden, who was supposed to fly to the US, could not make it. And he called me and said, Jacob, you are a board member, you are a faculty, go ahead and confer the degrees on them. And that was a dream come true. When I stood there in the church in Ghana, and I began to call the degree holders, and I came and gave them the shook their hands and gave them their faith. Then it dawned on me, Jacob, this was your dream and it's being fulfilled. When I went to Daboya and visited Pastor David and saw the congregation grow, and the number of churches he had planted, it dawned on me again, Jacob, this is your wish, your dream fulfilled. But I never became number one at Revolve Life. But in supporting the dream of Pastor Dale and Pastor Angela, my dreams has been fulfilled. Just like Joseph, Joseph's dream was fulfilled in being the number two for Pharaoh. Many of you are here, you have dreams. Pastor Dale has invited you. As long as you stay faithful and focused in helping him fulfill his dream, your dream will be fulfilled. Shall we pray? Our Most High God, we thank you for the opportunity to be under the leadership of Pastor Dale and Pastor Angela. We thank you that we have been invited to be part of this dream. We buy into it and we know just as we work hard and diligently to fulfill the dreams that you have given them, in so doing, you will fulfill our own dreams. We thank you for this opportunity and we pray your blessings upon them. These 30 years are just the beginning of greater things to come. Made better things, made better things be what you desire and purpose for them in the coming years. Let their best be yet to come and bring in more heirs and arrows to support them even as they fulfill their dreams. In your precious name I pray, amen.